Hi, you're watching TechCrunch TV. My name is Colleen Taylor. Here with me in the studio, I'm very pleased to have Maynard Webb, who is well known for a lot of things here in the tech industry. He has been the COO of eBay. He sits on the boards of uh, Yahoo and Salesforce. He's the chairman of the board at Live Ops. And now he's also an author with a new book called Rebooting Work, Transform How You Work in the Age of Entrepreneurship. So did I miss anything there, Maynard? That is fine. <laughs> I'm sure I missed some things because <laughs> it's, it's a lot that you've done. But thank you for joining us here. A pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. And so here's the book, uh, Rebooting Work. Um, can you just give me the overview right here? What What are... What are you saying? How, how should people be transforming how they work? Well, we think we've entered a new age that we used to be in, in the age of paternalism where you had a job for life and you had pensions and those days are long gone. And we've entered this age of entrepreneurship where people have to take care of themselves a lot more than depending on their company to take care of them. I think in our daily lives, our ex consumer experience has gotten so rich and powerful with the advent of the internet and cloud, social, and mobile that you can find anything you want anytime. You can watch anything on your, you know, when you want to watch it on, on whatever device you want to see. So you have far more richness in your life as a consumer. Then you walk into work and it feels stodgy because a lot of our practices and behaviors are still based on the way it used to be a few years ago. And so companies don't exist as long anymore as they used to for the, for the idea of a job for life is kind of archaic. And so I think we're in an exciting time. And I wrote the book to try to help people embrace the time and understand what they needed to do, both, both as an employee and as a company, to take advantage of this time. And I want you to get in, because there's a really cool graph in here, a sort of chart. Um, defining the age of paternalism versus right now the age of entrepreneurship. Right. Can you just give me some qualities, what, what made the age of paternalism what it was? Sure. Well, first of all, companies lasted for a lot longer. I started as, as a company man, which is frame one in our framework. Uh, when I started with IBM, I thought I'd be there forever. And, you know, you rewarded uh, you were rewarded for years of service as, a forward, as opposed to contribution. And, you know, I got promoted all the time. I, you know, I thought I'd had a job for life. I never worried about ever having another job outside. If somebody called, I wouldn't listen. And, you know, that was all good. But those kind of companies don't exist that much anymore. And in that quadrant, you're only as good as the company you're with. And if you go talk to folks at Dewey LeBeau who don't exist anymore or Bear Stearns, you know, there were a lot of great people, but the company went over. So I just don't think it's important. I think it's important to always know what your options are because you should take care of yourself instead of ceding control to your company. Now, do you think everybody has it within them to, to be an entrepreneur? I think a lot of people out there would say, you know, I, I have no, you know, <laughs> ambitions to be an entrepreneur. What is, you know... I think I, I, that, that's a great question. I think everybody needs to realize that their future is in their control whether they work for a company or they go the, to the what I call the real sweet spot of work, which is being the CEO of your own destiny, and you do it to the max and start your own company and all that other good stuff, that's not for everybody. But everybody can certainly take control of their destiny, even in, their, in, their, in the company, and realize that every day you decide this is the company you want to be with, this is the career you want to chase, et cetera. And you have some really great, you know, endorsements on this, but praise for the book from everyone from Marissa Meyer to Howard Schultz, Mark Benioff, Mark Andreessen. Um, but one of the cool ones is from Jed York, who's the CEO of the San Francisco 49ers, who are obviously going to the Super Bowl. Um, and, and in this book, you, you have an interesting corollary that you make or, or comparison that you make between work and sports. And Can sports. you talk about that? Well, first of all, go Niners. Let's hope we <laughs> come home next weekend with a huge win. Uh, Jed, I'm very honored to have Jed as an affiliate in my web investment network. And when I wrote the book, I thought in sports, it's quite interesting to play pro sports. It's hard to get on the team and it's hard to stay on the team. And so it operates as a true meritocracy, at least on the, on the sports field. So you can't be mediocre and stay at the top of your game. It's a tough business. And somehow in businesses, we don't look at talent the same way, and you can often have mediocre folks on the team, and I think that's not a good thing. And I think both businesses and talent need to continue to ra rise 
uh, raise the bar on themselves so that you always are looking for top talent because top talent wants to work with other top talent. And you've had obviously this great career in technology. Um, what about other industries? Do people in other industries, could they take something away this, from this, this book? This book works for everybody um, because I think the world has changed a lot and there are very few jobs that are safe forever anymore. And what I try to say is don't look at that and be uh, nervous about that, but realize that it's an invigorating time and that it's really up to you. But the price of admission in this world is you have to be good. And if you, and by the way, if you're not good, let's go get you some help to get better and get you the right skills so that you can continue to contribute. But there aren't a lot of safety nets uh, out there anymore. Now, say someone is looking to take your advice, transform how they work. Are there any tools out there that you're most excited about? Or oh, yeah, well, there's, there's several. Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to talk about two things. First, I built a checklist at the back of the book, which I filled out for myself for my next 10 years for where I'm going about what does success look like for you, and then how do you actually decide what matters most? Because I think a lot of people have dreams, but then don't put in place the actions that are required to get to the dreams or don't want to make the trade-offs. And so I've developed a checklist that will help you get there if you, if you want to. And then secondly, I think mentor, you know, I tried to take a look at what would be missing that used to be in the paternalistic world. And way back when there was a lot more mentoring that went on in big companies because you had more middle management and you, had, you were there a lot longer. And I looked at in this new world, where are you going to get the coaching, which I think is important, and the advice. And we, didn't, we thought that the top execs were pretty well served by coaches, but that if you're a first line manager or a director or an individual contributor, not so much. So as, a, as what came out of the book, we actually founded a company called Outside Council, which is up and running and, and doing well to try to provide help for those. Now that name is going to change because it sounds too much like a law firm. <laughs> yeah. uh, so stay tuned. I think it's but going to be now, ever wise. For now outside it's outsidecouncil.com? Outside outsidecouncil.com. Just go look it up. And it's, you know, we've having huge success. It's, it seems to be serving a real need for people to get advice um, in a meaningful fashion from a mentor. Both mentors and employees are enjoying it, and there are, you know, we've only been at it for eight months, but they're signing up after they finish their initial six months. They're signing up for more, um, both on both sides and with a high net promoter score. Now, you're obviously a very busy man, um, and you, this is your first book. Why, why now? Why, why did you write a book? Well, first of all, I had a co-author with me, Carly Adler, who is just fabulous, and we, she was working with me at Live Ops. Um, I fell in love with LiveOps out of my work at eBay, where we had all these entrepreneurs that were working on our platform, building their dreams, and I, so I fell in love with the whole entrepreneur thing. And then LiveOps had all these people on our platform working on their own terms, and they were very happy. And now I'm working with these entrepreneurs who get out of bed every day trying to change the world, and they're so passionate, and the energy is so high, and, and so I work almost daily with all these folks who are really happy and inspired and feel in charge of their destiny. And then I often spend time with big companies where not so much inside. And I felt like we were writing blogs about what was going on with this trend. But rather than hold anybody as, as the villain here, how do we paint a picture that, you know, the world has just changed here? And how do we create a map for people that helps them take advantage of this world and see it in a proactive, positive fashion as opposed to something to be afraid of. And and so that's oh, why sorry. we wrote the book. No. That's, so this is the time and it was better than just a bunch of blog posts. You just right. decided to put it all. Well, Carly said to me, you know, we were writing some blogs on it and she's like, Maynard, this is a book. And I said, really? What does that mean? And so we made it happen. Now, say I'm a CEO myself and I have a company and I want to have this be a place where my you know, employees can feel like they own their own destiny. What can I do? What can companies do? Well, first of all, you can listen a lot and create an environment where people have a say. Um, you know, instead of thinking in the old days, you know, we used to think of our people as our property. And we'd say things like, oh, that guy poached our person. 
That's not exactly the most enlightened view. If you actually were to think about it, and by the way, everybody knows who your people are today, thanks to LinkedIn and other places. So the best way to have your people be happy and satisfied is to earn their earn the right to have them come back to work for you the next day, knowing that there's tons of other places and what are you doing to create an environment where they're challenged and inspired and learning. And you know, we all have tough times in our businesses, but even in those times when you're communicating with your, your, your folks and they're learning and growing and you're giving them new challenges, they're very engaged and want to stay with you. And you mentioned earlier your sort of tenure plan, which might be surprising to some people to hear because they'd say, well, you're already so accomplished. You're still setting goals for yourself. <laughs> you know, what, what are you so excited about? Can you give me any idea what, of what, when the sure, next 10 years? Sure. For me, what I put in the book, and I felt I, I needed to do it if I, were, if I was asking other people to do it, I should do it for myself. And there's many on the personal side about more time with my family at this stage um, um, and more time with my wife and all that good stuff. But it also speaks to that on the work side, I want to identify, mentor, or grow two to five more change the world companies. I've had a chance to do that already with a few, like eBay and Salesforce and hopefully LiveOps, and, but I'm not done. And so I don't want to run them anymore, but I want to help grow them. And so through my investment network and what I'm doing with like the new mentoring company and why I joined Yahoo as a board member was to help satisfy that goal. The other piece is I want to set an example for others to amplify their impact, whether it's the entrepreneurs I work with or whether it's the mentoring network or whatever. I want people to do more. And um, if somebody, say someone out there is watching that, is there a way to approach you or something that you're sure. especially looking for? Well, and when we get 20 companies a week that are looking for, for us to invest in, we, we pick people that are trying to change the world in areas of our interest, which is cloud computing and enterprise software, and also mobile and internet companies in general. So just send me a note at maynard at winfunding.com and we'll take a look. Sounds good. And Rebooting Work, we can buy this where? Is there a it's, uh, well, preferred place? Well, Rebooting Work has a website that has a, you know, a bunch of places you can go, but it's also available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and most places. Are you a, are you a, a solid book guy or do you do a Kindle? Or? I, do, I do downloads more than anything else today. Okay, so, so. so you, it's a stamp of approval if, if you decide you want to download it. Maynard right. approves. Um, <laughs> great. Well, Maynard Webb, thank you so much for coming by and, and talking to us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. It was awesome.